Welcome to this daily devotion for Monday, May 17th, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you into a time of daily devotion so that we can grow closer in love of God and love of neighbor. We're using the resource, A Guide to Prayer for All God's People. It's by Reuben Job and Norman Shawchuck. It's available at cokesbury.com through the Upper Room Publishing House. Let's take a moment. Center ourselves, take a breath wherever you are, gather your thoughts and things that you need to truly engage with this time, and let's invite God into our presence as we hear the invocation. Ever watchful God, who knows the heart and secret desires of all persons, search my heart. I pray, see if there be any harm in me, and lead me in your way forever. I pray in the name of your own gentle spirit. Amen. As we approach Pentecost Sunday, our theme this week is life in the spirit. And our theme psalm is Psalm 104. It's a longer one this week. So today I will read it once in its entirety. If there's a word or a phrase that reaches out to you, jot it down, underline it, make a mental note, and come back to it throughout the week. Hear the words of the psalmist. Let my whole being bless the Lord. Lord, my God, how fantastic you are. You are clothed in glory and grandeur. You wear light like a robe. You open the skies like a curtain. You build your lofty house on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot going around on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers. You make fire and flame your ministers. You establish the earth on its foundations so that it will never fall. You covered it with watery deep like a piece of clothing. The waters were higher than the mountains. But at your rebuke, they ran away. They fled in fear at the sound of your thunder. They flowed over the mountains, streaming down the valleys to the place you established for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross, so they'll never again cover the earth. You put gushing springs into dry riverbeds. They flow between the mountains, providing water for every wild animal. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Overhead, the birds of the sky make their homes, chirping loudly in the trees. From your lofty house, your water you water the mountains. The earth is full by the fruit of what you've done. You make grass grow for the cattle. You make plants for human farming in order to get food from the ground and wine, which cheers people's hearts, along with oil, which makes their face shine, and bread, which sustains the human heart. The Lord's trees are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon, which God planted. The birds make their nests where the stork has a home in the cypress. The high mountains belong to the mountain goats. The ridges are the refuge of badgers. God made the moon for the seasons and the sun too, which knows when to set. You bring the darkness and it is night when every forest animal prowls. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Then people go off to their work and they do their work until evening. Lord, you have done so many things. You made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations. And then there's the sea, wide and deep, with its countless creatures, living things, both small and large. There goes the ships on it, and Leviathan, which you made, plays in it. All your creations wait for you, to give them food on time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are full completely. But when you hide your face, they are terrified. When you... Take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you let loose your breath, they are created. and You make the surface of the ground brand new again. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all he has made. He has only to look at the earth and it shakes. God touches the mountains. 
and they erupt in smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise to my God while I'm still alive. Let my praise be pleasing to him. I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Let sinners be wiped clean from the earth. Let the wicked be no more. But let my whole being bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, if there's a word or a phrase that just speaks to you today, write it down. Take note of it. Let's come back to it throughout the week. Our next reading comes from the letter to uh, the church in Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 17. So I'm telling you this, and I insist on it in the Lord. You shouldn't live your life like the Gentiles anymore. They base their lives on pointless thinking, and then they are in, in the dark in their reasoning. They are disconnected from God's life because of their ignorance and their closed hearts. They are people who lack all sense of right and wrong, who have turned themselves over to doing what feels good and to practicing every sort of corruption along with greed. But you didn't learn that sort of thing from Christ. Since you you really listened to him and you were taught how the truth is in Jesus, change the former way of life that was part of the person you once were, corrupted by deceitful desires. Instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with the new person created according to God's image in justice and holiness. Therefore, if you have gotten rid of lying, each of you must tell the truth to your neighbor, because we are parts of each other in the same body. Be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun set on your anger. Don't provide an opportunity for the devil. Thieves should no longer steal. Instead, they should go to work using their hands to do good so that they will have something to share for those in need. Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that it benefits those who hear what you say. Don't make the Holy Spirit of God unhappy. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. Put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, slander, along with every other evil. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. May God bless the reading of the letter today. We're talking about Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in the upper room. And they were filled with God's Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit non-existent before that? No, the Holy Spirit was God and is God since the beginning, before the beginning, all that kind of stuff. But there's this sense that after Pentecost that the Spirit resides in us truly has a home in us, if we let it. And that that's what connects people together to create the church. There's no church without the Spirit. There's no church without Christians being connected to each other through that Spirit. But being part of that Spirit, I I, I love talking about the Holy Spirit because so many modern Christians, contemporary Christians, last hundred years or so, think that the Holy Spirit is the the mysterious part of God. And, and yes, to some extent, as all of God is mysterious. But when in fact the Holy Spirit is the most intimately connected part of God we know, it is the God we know. It is the God in us, moving us, calling us, molding us, mending us, transforming us. So Paul says, listen, if you are truly alive in Christ, the Spirit's in you and, and live into that. And he gives some examples, things we should do, things we shouldn't do. But, but he's not saying this is a definitive list. He's saying, in my experience, here's what it looks like to be made new in the Spirit, to let that Spirit control you, move you. And, and that's what really modern Christians are afraid of. They're afraid of giving up control. And, and it's not just modern Christians, it's humanity. We don't like to give up control. And that's 100% what it means when you let the Spirit in your life. You give up control. And in that, you find freedom. You find a new type of power and control. Self-control, peace, compassion, patience, understanding. Because do you think... 
I won't speak for you, but do you think if you're bitter, losing your temper, angry, shouting, slandering, that you've really got things under control? Of course not. Of course not. We know it. We, we can talk circles around it. We know we cannot help ourselves. But the Spirit can. That's the good news. Encourage each other. I love it. Don't say things that are foul, but say what's helpful, that builds each other up, that encourages each other. And, and friends, here's the encouraging part. Choose today. Close your eyes, take a breath, and open yourself and say, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> I love that song. You're, you're not the pilot. You're not the driver. But if you give control to the one who can truly make you go in right ways, I think the ride will be a lot better. Today's reading comes from Seeking God's Peace in the Nuclear Age, A Call to Disciples of Christ. I've never read this in its entirety. It'd be interesting, too. While there are obvious political, economic, social, and technological dimensions to the issues of nuclear war, it must be recognized that the issues posed are first and foremost of a religious and ethical nature. Through the scriptures, we have received a vision of God's intention to overcome all hostility and alienation and to bring shalom to all creation. Our calling is to be faithful to that divine revelation and that vision. From the standpoint of biblical faith, nuclear issues are religious issues. The vision of God's concern for human suffering and God's wrath against those who cause oppression and destruction must become our guiding vision if we would claim to be God's people. Friends, the Spirit calls us to move towards justice. As United Methodists, uh, which UMC and I was part of, we are called to personal holiness. That's what we're doing right now. But also social justice, to move to make the world better. Our mission statement as a church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, that's the personal holiness, for the transformation of the world. That's the social justice. We know that if we become disciples, if we are moved by the Spirit, the Spirit moves us to build the kingdom, to make God's kingdom come. And what is it? It's a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of hope, a kingdom of joy, a kingdom of love. The author of this work talking about nuclear war, we could talk about it in so many other ways. As I continue to grow closer to Christ and take step back and step, steps forward and all of that kind of thing, I'm constantly challenged with my own love of violence. Whether it's growing up in martial arts and, and t learning so much and, and enjoying the thrill of fighting, um, or wanting to fight for justice, sometimes being a little too passionate in those areas, fighting for my kids' well-being, for my family. Or when it's talking about war, strife in our world. I find that I am always pushed and prodded and moved by the Spirit to find the way of peace. Because as I read Scripture and I experience the risen Christ and I see and hear and live what Christ has done and is doing. It's always peace. And that's challenging. And that's tough, but it's so much better. Friends, today we pray for those closest to us. Maybe there's people who are living in your life who are struggling to experience that spirit. Maybe in this pandemic, there are friends who are deeply faithful who have lost some of their faith or having crisis of faith. Or maybe there are people in your life who are at war with one thing or another. Let's pray for them. Would you pray with me? Lord, we ask that you send your spirit upon us all. Help us encourage those who are struggling and help us bring peace to those war-torn parts of our life, our world, and those around us. We pray in this in your holy name. 
praying the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, I leave you with the benediction. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Melt all hardness of heart. Use us for your own purposes, wherever you are sending us today. Until tomorrow, friends. Peace be with you. Amen.